Good morning. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome for the first time to Rogers Reads. I'm Megan. I look like crap this morning and have huge dark circles under my eyes because I had the brilliant idea to stay up until 2.30 in the morning listening to uh, the podcast My Favorite Murder for the first time. Um, I, I listened to it for the first time. I should call it My Favorite Murder for the first time. Um, anyway. So, um, yeah, I was up way too late and then up way too early with three girls that do not know how to be quiet while they're getting ready for school. Um, so today I wanted to talk to you about books that I'd like to reread. Oh, and that noise you're hearing in the background? That's our rabbit. I don't know what she's doing. She's burrowing in her cage. Anyway, okay, so I wanted to talk to you today about books that I'd like to reread. Um, people talk about this a lot, I think, on BookTube, um, but I recently, um, Kim, I think, I'm so sorry, I, I'm pretty sure it's Kim, at, um, Writer Princess, I will link her down below. You should definitely check her out because she is sweet and funny and hysterical and, um, and dresses up like a princess once in a while. That's her other job. She doesn't just do that for us, like, anyway. Um, so she was talking about books, she, top five books she wants to reread. Um, and it inspired me to, um, to do that as well. It, it's going to be five-ish, top five-ish books I want to reread. Um, so the first is actually an author, um, but I'm going to be talking specifically about a couple books, but, um, this author, Ted Decker, um, in a, a lifetime not all that long ago, but feels really long ago, but not all that long ago, um, I was really um, into my Christianity, and I read mostly Christian fiction um, at, for a stage of my life. And um, this one author, Ted Decker, was one of my favorites. Um, he writes... like thriller, mystery, sometimes allegory type, but like creepy-ish, it's really hard to explain, but I, I just loved him, and um, one of the reasons I loved him was because he really made you think, and it wasn't like overly preachy type, um, in, in my opinion at that time. Um, so I want... So, okay, sorry, I'm getting off my brain. Um, I, another video I saw recently on BookTube, I believe it was CC at Problems of Book Nerd, um, had talked about how she used to read Ted Decker, but she had recently gotten rid of all her Ted Decker books because um, she realized, came to realize that they were problematic and there were some of his like like one of the some of his first original books um that were Islamophobic and um so I want to revisit I have I still have a ton of his books um not really the really early ones though I have um his circle trilogy and then these two um Sinner and Saint which are related they're kind of like offshoots of the circle trilogy um and so I just I want to revisit some of his books um, and see what I what I think now um, and if they if they come off problematic to me. Um, so these two I, I mostly picked out to share to talk about and show today because they're just pretty. I think my cat must have gotten a hold of that or something. But um, but I love the covers. Um, Saint and Sinner. So, uh, the thing about the Circle Trilogy and the books that kind of surround it are that, um, you can read them in any order and they're, you know, they all come back together and it doesn't matter. But, um, it's been so long since I've read them. 
Uh, Sinner is the story of Marsuvius Black, a force of raw evil who speaks with wicked persuasion that is far more destructive than swords or guns. Beware all who stand in his way. It's also the story of Billy Rediger and Darcy Lang, two unsuspecting survivors of a research project gone bad, who discover that they <coughs> excuse me, are perhaps the two most powerful souls in the land. Listen to them or pay a terrible price. And it's the story of Johnny Drake, the one who comes out of the desert and leaves the 3,000. Follow him and die. Sinner tells the story of a free land where people who worship as they please and say what they believe are suddenly silenced in the name of tolerance. So, yeah. I am really, I really want to revisit these and uh, see what I think. Because um, I'm kind of of the mind that even if an author um, wrote some problematic things 20 years ago, um, you know, people grow and change and um, I mean, you wouldn't believe the person I was four years ago. So, um, I kind of feel like, you know, if you wrote a book that was problematic um, 20 years ago, but, um, you know, he's evolved from that, then I don't really feel the need to get rid of these books. But at the same time, if there are problematic elements, I definitely don't want to keep them around the house. So, all right, moving on from that. Next is Great Expectations. This is a book that I did read in high school. I don't remember how much of it I read and how much of it I read the Cliff Notes version. Um, I know I read some of it at least because I do remember I enjoyed um, the characters Pip and Miss Havisham and and so I, I'm definitely, I, I want to see what, I think I could get a lot more out of this as an adult. Um, and I, I love this cover. I don't know why. I just think that's a really neat copy. Um, if, I don't remember it being so long. Oh, and this one has Dickens' original ending. I did not know that there was... As originally written, Great Expectations had an ending substantially different from the ending with which it was published. I'm not going to read any more of that explanation because it goes into detail, but well, that is cool. So I'm looking forward to checking that out. Um, there are a lot of classic novels um, that I want to reread or read again for the first time. I want to read A Scarlet Letter, The Scarlet Letter um, by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Um, I have a copy of that on the way. Um, I think that's one that I kind of didn't really read when I read it <laughs> in high school. Because uh, I thought it was really boring, but um, I recently read um, When She Woke, which is like a modern retelling. I have um, my thoughts on that book um, on my channel. Um, so it's like a modern reimagining of The Scarlet Letter. So I, I want to read, reread, read The Scarlet Letter. Um, I know there's other ones, The Great Gatsby, I have a copy of that on the way. Um, that's another one that I I think I mostly read. <laughs> but, you know, it's been 20 plus years, so. Alright, next I want to reread A Fine Balance by Will Hinton Mystery. And this was published in 1995, which I did not realize. It's been that long. I read it in around 2003, 2004 with my book club um, that I was going to at the time, and I know I read this, but I don't remember a thing about it. Um, this is what the blurb on the back says, with a compassionate realism and narrative sweep that recall the work of Charles Dickens, this magnificent novel captures all the cruelty and corruption, dignity and heroism of India. The time is 1975. The place is an unnamed city by the sea. The government has just declared a state of emergency, in whose upheavals four strangers, a spirited window, widow, a young student uprooted from his idyllic hill station, and 
two tailors who have fled the caste cast violence of their native village will be thrust together, forced to share one cramped apartment and an uncertain future. As the characters move from distrust to friendship and from friendship to love, a fine balance creates an enduring panorama of the human spirit in an inhuman state. And I just think it's so weird that I don't remember this. I, I know that I read it, and I know that I enjoyed it, but I remember nothing. Um, yeah. I, I, I had, let's see, I had at least one young child, possibly two, because I went to that book group for like three or four years. So, um, I'm just going to blame it on mom brain, like baby, toddler, mom brain. I don't remember. Um, next, a lot of my rereads are books that I'm just not I completely sure how much, um, it, well, the Ted Deckers and the A Fine Balance, I know I read completely, but this is another one. I think I read most of it, and then I think I tried to read it again and finish it, and um, I was like junior high age, like maybe around 12, and I'm of Jewish heritage. The Holocaust is definitely of importance to me, um, but I think that at that age, I was just kind of like, okay. She's stuck in a closet, or, uh, you know, a small uh, attic space. That's the rabbit again. Darling. Um, she's, you know, it doesn't have a happy ending, and I'm not sure why I'm reading this. Like, I just, I think at 12 years old, I just kind of find it, found it really boring and depressing. Which, you know, now at 37 years old, sounds really shallow, but that's probably the normal response for an 11, 12 year old kid who was more interested in R.L. Stein and Christopher Pike and um, things that had something going on, as terrible as it sounds, but um, so yeah, but now um, this is something that I definitely want to reread, um, definitely want to, um, you know, have for my children to read, um, I mean, this is their heritage. Um, and uh, I definitely uh, want to read that again, or read again for the first time. Um, I'm really sorry about Nico over there. Is just really she has kicked her little. We have this big cage for her, and there's like this plastic um, cubby, um, like like hidey hole we call it, and she's like kicked that out and. She's kicking all her bedding, taking all her bedding away and chewing on the sides of the cage. She's just really in an interesting mood today. But anyway, my last, or my most anticipated reread, my copy is actually in storage right now, so I have to get it, but um, Flowers for Algernon, I don't think, maybe it's a, I don't think it's really going to to see it. It's uh, Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. Um, this is a book that um, a friend, a classmate of mine, um, I think I was a sophomore or junior in high school, and a classmate uh, lent me his book, his copy of this. Um, and I just loved it. Um, it was, I found it to be really, really moving. Um, I feel like this is a, a well-known book. Uh, I mean, it's and it's it has a 4.05 on Goodreads. Um, I was just confused for a second because I see that it says this was published in 2005, but it was definitely published before that. But that, that must be this specific cover version. Anyway, um, it has over. 300,000 ratings on Goodreads, but I hardly ever hear anyone talk about it. It's not, like, it's not like Great Expectations or and The Diary of Anne Frank or, uh, you know, To Kill a Mockingbird, um, as far as, like, you hear about people talking about it all the time. I hear people talking about it once in a while, um, but anyway, here's the, um, the synopsis on Goodreads. 
Um, this is a classic story of a mentally disabled man whose experimental quest for intelligence mirrors that of Algernon, an extraordinary lab mouse. In poignant diary entries, Charlie tells us how a brain operation increases his, increases his IQ and changes his life. As the experimental procedure takes effect, Charlie's intelligence expands until it surpasses that of the doctors who engineered his metamorphosis. The experiment seems to be a scientific breakthrough of paramount, paramount importance until Algernon begin, begins a sudden unexpected deterioration. I can't speak this morning. Will the same happen to Charlie? And um, so, yeah, I definitely want to reread this. Um, and um, one thing I'm wondering about is. If this book is, would now be considered problematic for some reason because um, because we're trying because in the book not we but in the book they're trying to take a um, a grown man with um, you know an intellectual disability and make him smarter and I I'm just curious if that is something, I mean, it was, um, you know, it wasn't against his will, um, he wanted to give it a try, but, you know, he was intellectually disabled, so, you know, um, is the, is that really informed consent, and, um, I'm not trying to sound like I don't believe in informed consent, because I don't, <laughs> um, but it's, um, it's just, it's just, it would be interesting, so I'm, I want to reread that, and, um, and just, discuss that and see what people think um so yeah anyway so those are the books that i want to reread this has wow i chatted a lot um and i don't like editing and i don't really know how to edit so uh we'll s hopefully you've stuck with me if you've stuck with me this long thank you um i'm going to link writer princess below um i'll link my um my video about um when she woke the uh, scarlet letter retelling down below um and yeah so thank you for watching and if you enjoyed my my rabbit noise in the background and my chattiness then please give me a like and uh you know comment down below about anything i'd love to talk to you guys uh, let me know what you're thinking and subscribe and all that good stuff and i'll see you later